One will be the cause, I will see how they are related, but the hypothesis is a statement that describes the relationship between variables, that is to men drink more coffee than women. So another hypothesis relates the sex variable to the coffee drinking variable. And we see that there are plenty of different variables. Huh? Qualitative, quantitative, and quantitative, we have uh, subdivisions, etc. But that will be um, introduced slowly during the course of this uh, class. Uh, variable hypothesis, okay. Now again, um, an hypothesis is a statement of exactly what should be true if a certain theory is true. Okay. Now, we are entering now a more deductive aspect of, of research where you say, okay, if what I'm saying is true, then I should have this, I should have that, etc. This should happen this way or that way. And uh, well, indeed, if what you witness is exactly happening the way you say it should, well, indeed, you have something, especially if what you find is highly unlikely to be true, if, what, if it's not due to the fact that what you said before is true. Now, again, we have to see that, uh, so when you enter that phase, you start testing your hypothesis. You say, okay, I believe that there is a high link between early value management usage in project management and project success. This is what I believe. You're going to go out there and you're going to collect information. Actually, it's been done in a few years ago by a student called Robert Marshall. He that went out there and collected information, tried to answer. So his hypothesis was there is a relationship between the use of our value management and project success. That was his hypothesis. Okay. He went out there. Hypothesis are not aims or theories. Uh, research will state that hypothesis extremely precisely and clearly. An hypothesis has to be tested. Yeah, that's the next step. So you say, okay, uh, I've read everything about project management and early value management, almost everything. I have an hypothesis. I believe that earned value management, the use of earned value management, is linked to higher project success. I go out there, I test my hypothesis, and I find that it's indeed correct or not correct. The theory is either, then either supported or disconfirmed. Theory testing relies on logical arguments and deduction. If what I'm saying is true, then I should witness that. Now, again, be careful. A implies B is not the same as B implies A. We're going to see that this afternoon. Nonetheless, if A implies B, we're going to see something called adductive reasoning, which is a special form of induction. Uh, when we see that adductive reasoning is, let me give you an example. Uh, by the way, I, I won't confuse you at this stage, so I'll give you that example later. Just deduction is about if A is true, if A implies B, for instance, oh, let me give you an example of deductive reasoning. It's often used in course of law. The example would be, if my client had done what you said he did, then we would have found him on the place of the crime. However, he wasn't seen on the scene of the, on the, scene of the crime, therefore he cannot have committed the crime that you see. Okay. So this is the kind of reasoning that you will be using in your research. Robert Marshall found that the two were related, earned value management and project success. However, he couldn't prove with what we have gathered that earned value management use was the cause of higher project success. Nonetheless, in his PhD, he started arguing that it certainly was not the increase in project success that was the cause of the use of earned value management. It was much more the other way around. The use of earned value management by asking you to keep track of what you are doing, by controlling all the major aspects of the project is indeed helping that project to uh, achieve a positive conclusion, to be successful. Now, of course, you have to use in that, in that case more deductive argument. Okay? Deduction, we are going to see more of that later on. So, the theory is either supported this confidence. Theory testing relies on logical arguments and deduction. A good way to remember what we've just seen is to remember, is to, uh, I'm going to show you this. I want to introduce the concept, the concept of the analogy. What is an analogy? I'm going to sh show you a typical analogy. A is to B as C is to what? A is to B as C is to D. D. Exactly. Uh, how does that work? How do we, in a typical analogy, what do we do? To solve this, 
What do we have to do? Well, first of all, we have to understand the relationship between A and B. I'm giving you two instances, A and B. You have to come up with a general idea, in a way I could represent it like this. Given A and B, I have to create the relationship, right? I have to create a relationship between A and B. It's an inductive process. I give you two layers, you have to come up with the rule. Then, once you've done that, if I give you C, you are going to find, well, find D, deduction. I give you the rule, what is the rule? Plus one in the alphabetical order, that's the rule. A is to B, you build the rule, induction. C is to D, given C, given one instance, and the rule, I find the missing letter. You can see that in the process of the analogy, A is to B as C is to D, we see exactly the two processes that we've seen before. The inductive process, which is a generalization. From two instances, you generalize. And then you apply the generalization to specific instances. You deduce, given the rule, you deduce that this is D because you are given C. Okay. Now, of course, the question is, is the rule correct? Can you? Properly infer the rule. Um, well, this is open to debate. In fact, uh, me and doing research right now on, on induction. Yeah, so research can lead you to many, many areas. And um, induction is something that is highly criticized. But nobody, nobody really understands how we can build induction. Can always, always be um, criticized. But there is nothing else we can do. This is the limit of of uh, our knowledge. We have to generalize, but when we generalize, we make mistakes. So the question is, how do we, with statistics, we quantify the amount of certainty that we have? Okay, we know that we are 90% sure that it is correct or not correct, that our generalization, generalization are correct or not correct. The best we can aim at, we can achieve, is to quantify the uncertainty that we have and reduce it. But we can never reach 100% certainty. It's very, very rare. In fact, it's impossible. That um, I describe um, later on during the course of the class. So, just to show you that, well, there is the concept of the analogy, there is the concept of induction, deduction, hypothesis. Those are important words that you should be aware of before you you do um, you do any research. So this is introduced here. Here, now, see another thing is I could I could tell you about this. Uh, no genesis, but this is exactly the same as what we've seen. There is no need for you to remember that word. So now let me move to the cyclical nature of the practice of research. Now, so you have, do you have any questions at this stage? Or it is pretty broad, but you see, this is actually exactly what we'll be doing in. Um, the coming courses and what you'll be doing in your PhD. Yes, Alicia? Can we define what is the difference between a hypothesis and a statement? Okay, a statement is a little broader. I know students often are confused. Ralph will tell you there's a difference between a statement, an hypothesis, a question, blah, blah. Now, tell you the truth, all these are about the same. A statement maybe is more general than a hypothesis, okay? But it's all related. Okay? An hypothesis is supposed to be more precise. S especially in statistics, we see that an hypothesis has a very clear meaning. It's a non-hypothesis. Non-hypothesis is the, the most important hypothesis, and it has a very clear meaning in statistics. All the rest is definitions, verbal definitions, that an hypothesis that you're dealing with is that a statement, or what is the difference between a question and a question? Um, well, you can debate about that for a time, but in statistics, the null hypothesis is very clearly established, and we we'll see what it is. For me, all the rest, just beating around the bush, or but it's not, it's not really just verbal definitions, but ultimately, um, I don't know, it's not so important, okay? 
What is important is, do you have a good question? What is a good question? We'll see that tomorrow. How do you get to a good question? What is considered a good question for research? Well, that we'll see tomorrow. Okay. Now, what are the goals of research? Now, first, there is a cyclical nature of the practice of research. I could show you the, the wheel of research. I think I could show you, yeah. The wheel of research, research is never ending. Right? You, something you will notice, you never stop doing research. It goes on and on. And I have to stop one day, but uh, now let me give you the, you have to stop there. Now, I'm saying that because the many, many students never finish their PhD. It's a sad truth, but uh, once we had a big class, and I was thinking the students, you know, 20% so far, only 20% of all the PhD students we've had have finished. And I've been around for seven, the PhD program has been around for seven years. Uh, now, again, uh, does that mean we failed in some ways, or uh, possibly, but uh, personally, I have a tendency to believe that uh, uh, it's very easy to get lost in your research. Very easy. There are so many traps, so many. So, oh, this one is gone here. So, every, I mean, so far I've seen many, many. Some students disappear, some, some, some other students are bungee students. They appear, they're very active for one week, then disappear, we never see them. They come back again and they work. And Okay, anyway, I, I won't enter into it, my typology of students at this stage, but uh, uh, I think, uh, what is this, um, yeah, what is the cyclical nature of, of research? I want to show you this. Now, one, you're going to stop with topic selection. We'll see that tomorrow. How do you select a topic? Topic selection. Once you have an idea, example, you have an idea of what you want to study. Most of you, if you're here, you probably have a real idea of what you want to do. Anybody has wants to volunteer for something? Nobody? No, uh, no. Yes, yes, yes. You want to volunteer something? Any idea? You, Alicia, you want to give us a few words? Any, any, any topic selection you have? Yes. My topic selection is the, the struggles between the project manager and the functional manager in matrix organizations. In what? In, so the, in between the? Project manager and functional manager in uh, matrix organization. Okay, so this is clear. Okay. Two different types of managers in a matrix organization. So this is topic selection. She's going to go now with her keywords. There are three keywords, the two types of managers plus matrix organization. She's going to start reviewing the literature. Okay. We're going to see why we want to do a literature review. A literature review. In fact, what you're supposed to do, that's what you will do. But we see that, of course, there are several ways, several other ways of doing this. Then, after you've done that, you come up with operational definition. You will have to operationalize all the definitions you came up with. You have two definitions for two different, two different managers and a definition of matrix organization. All this will have to be operationalized. Hypothesis formulation. Now, you, are, you want to link the two, but how are they related? Uh, what, do you have an idea already how you want to relate uh, the two types of managers with uh, matrix organization? How will you relate them together? You don't know yet? I relate them through the using different uh, theories of organization. Okay, but anyway, but mm -hmm. uh, you need a story. Just don't tell me how you're going to do it, but there is ma manager one, manager two, and there is matrix organization. Now, how are all those things related? They have, how are you going to study this here, this year? You need to relate them in one way or another. Okay? At one stage, we have to relate them. Otherwise, you don't have any hypothesis. You're just talking about the things. But you don't have hypothesis. Okay? So hypothesis, remember an hypothesis is linking variables together. If you don't do that, you have nothing. Yes? Well, um, in fact, the process is not as clearly established. In fact, you start with an interest in something. Most of the time, students, they start with an interest in something. But when you will present your research, you will have to introduce the hypothesis right after the operational definitions. What I'm showing you here is the way your research will be introduced. Okay. Tomorrow, we see what is called the um, 
it's called the standard approach to research. You will start with an introduction to your paper.